Welcome to our thought for today, for today, uh, Wednesday the 16th of March. Today we're looking at the beginning of chapter 5 of Hosea. Uh, it's chapter 5, verse 1 to 7. The point of this passage uh, is the message from the Lord of accountability. Often we will try to cover our tracks uh, when we're being dishonest. Criminals endeavour to do exactly that, but in truth, uh, they are never as clever as they think they are. And so the day will come when they find themselves before a judge facing prison. If that is true for us on an, before earthly authorities, um, how much more can be said when we consider our position before the Lord? And so in Hosea 5, we see the focus uh, here on leaders held to account. Verse 1 and 2 says, Hear this, you priests, pay attention, you Israelites. Listen, O royal house, this judgment is against you. The Lord has something important to say, emphasized by the, the, the words used in the opening verse. Hear, hear this, pay attention, listen. It is the culmination of the consequences of a nation uh, where sin has been found and judged guilty. The leaders, politically and religiously, uh, must reflect on their role in that guilt, the sin of the nation. Hence, the Lord is calling upon them to listen carefully. The guilt of leaders is not in doubt. The Lord accuses them uh, in using hunting terms. They ensnare, they spread a net to catch people in their foolish ways, where they are supposed to bring the blessing of relationship with the Lord to a people and to be a positive witness to all that he has done and will do for his people, instead they have led their people astray, enslaved them to falsehood, and as such they will all be judged by God. They will be held accountable for their sin. In our own day, we need to constantly question the leadership we sit under, whether it be politically at election time or indeed in the church leadership. Is it faithful to the revealed truth of God? Because nothing less is acceptable to God. When we wander uh, from the revelation God has given us in his word, we inevitably end up mixing in to that worldly thought and worldly wisdom. And we see that happening today, even in our own church. Um, what the world aspires to is adopted into the church without thought as to whether it might be contrary to the word of God. It happens in all sorts of ways. But the point is the Lord will judge. The Lord knows the heart of man. Now, as was then, we will be a people without excuse if we have ignored God's truth and if we have abused God's grace. For Hosea, the problem is spelled out clearly in verses 3 to 7. Verse 3 and 4 says this, I know all about Ephraim. Israel is not hidden from me. Ephraim, you have turned to prostitution. Israel is corrupt. Their deeds do not permit them to return to their God. The spirit of prostitution is in their hearts. They do not acknowledge the Lord. Israel's arrogance testifies against them. The Lord knows them intimately. He knows them through and through. But the problem is they don't know him at all. They are a covenant people who have lost their way and do not know their covenant God. The reason for that is in what they're doing. The sinfulness of their actions is preventing them. They have lost sight of him in the midst of their evil and they cannot find their way back to him. Even so, they're still relying on the pride of their historical traditions. They're still sacrificing as if they were faithful to the Lord. And as such, they're, they are fooled into the delusion of their reality 
and their true position before God. As you read verse 6, you see the Lord's discipline for an unfaithful people. When they go with their flocks and herds to seek the Lord, they will not find him. He has withdrawn uh, himself from them. Recovery at this point is not possible. They have gone too far and so the Lord will abandon them. He will abandon them to judgment. It is God's judgment upon them and upon their religious practices which are empty and of no avail. As we look at our lives and the life of our church, this should speak to us. The Lord has been gracious. He has been merciful in giving his son for our salvation. We as God's people today, as we fellowship together, need to be real. We need to be honest before the Lord. We need to be genuine. The only way we can do that is to give ear to what the Lord is saying and has said. Putting the truth of God central and putting aside everything else that is contrary to the word of God. Don't be fooled by the falsehood of religiosity. There's only one way we can be saved. Only one way in which we can live for the Lord. And it's summed up for us in what Paul said to, in response to the question of the Philippian jeweler. Acts 16 and verse 31. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. The Lord has made it possible for us to know him, to find him and to live with him. And indeed to live for him. We just simply need to be faithful in hearing that word and living it out day by day. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord, you knew us. You know our lives. You know where we let you down. You know when we fail you. And yet in your love, you've given your son. Your son who has died for our sin, past, present and future. Lord, help us to be true to him. Help us to be genuine in our repentance and to faithfully walk with him and for him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.